Well, here I am back doing another cracky passive hydroponic uh, system. And the uh, five gallon bucket that you see here was set up as an experiment because I've never done uh, non vegetables in a container such as this. Now, what you see in front of you right now is colocasia plants. Now, these are sometimes referred to as elfin ears and uh, can, depending on a variety, get substantially large. Now, the uh, way that I have this set up is the uh, outer uh, purple uh, disc that you see right there, those were where I was growing lettuce using two-inch net pots. However, with the uh, inner four net pots, those are 3.75-inch net pots. Now, I received these uh, colocasia bulbs, and I ended up uh, putting them into a net pot, just like you see here. And I packed around the outside of those with a combination of around um, 70, probably 80, 80% 80 uh, cocoa core and 20% uh, of a uh, chunky perlite. Now that uh, wicked up quite a bit. And it did have Dynagrow nutrient uh, put into the uh, water. So with the combination of the uh, wicking and the nutrient water coming up in the lighting, I'm getting some algae growth on the uh, surface of that material. So if I were to do this experiment again, I would probably uh, come up with a slightly different approach. Now, of the three, this one is starting to push up on the soil, but has not emerged yet. This was the uh, first one that came up, and this little leaf uh, came up, never got any larger, but is almost like it uh, was putting up a, a solar um, array, you know, trying to gather light and provide energy, kind of like uh, what you'd put on a home. And that power from that leaf fueled the growth of that spike with a substantially larger leaf. So very fascinating how that all works out together. Uh, the other one that came up is this one. And this one actually came up with multiple leaves right off the bat. And so it's fascinating how these things uh, happen to grow. But with the... Uh, Nutrients, I have not added any more nutrient, but I have been topping off the water, keeping it at that level, and I wouldn't recommend uh, normally topping off with the cracky method, but this is the only way that I would typically suggest for anybody who wants to add additional water. Now, I have covered that to help keep the uh, net pot from gathering uh, nutrients since it's exposed. Now, in terms of light, uh, the Colocasia family requires um, anywhere from about a couple hundred to 500 um, PPFD. And the tops of those containers are right around uh, 240 um, PPFD. And as you get up here where these leaves are growing, for example, right about that large leaf, that's uh, 500 PPFD. And I'm getting that from a grow light from a company called Sansi. This is a 50-watt uh, light, and I am running it uh, 24 hours a day. So in terms of the daily light integral, the uh, emerging plants were getting around uh, 20 DLI. And the uh, substantial uh, growth points up on the top are currently getting around just over 40 DLI. So I would uh, venture to guess that based off this setting that I'm hitting the sweet spot for colocasia growth. And what I'm planning to do is adjust the light, trying to keep that around the uh, 500 um, PPEFD range for right now. And I'd like to adapt these plants for out, 
doors or possibly indoors using a different system. But uh, this is just another example of how versatile that the uh, Krecky method is. Uh, props to uh, Dr. Krecky on his research with that. And thank you for uh, tuning in for this. And I will be sure to include it on some future updates.